before your throne alateka i let the lifting of our hands oh equals to a sacrifice oh lord our god we thank you we thank you alabara i alamasate akabra dada babo i akababo labana arada baba baba gara baba baba Ela 
Baba 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 Baba
And he said, anyone thirsty, if there is room for more, oh my God, he has more. On this day of impartation, if you are not tired, if you are not satisfied, the scripture says, out of their belly shall flow rivers of living water. Even as the scriptures have said, if your cry is I don't have more, I want more. If your cry is I want more, then the Lord oh can cause can cause something oh to touch you tonight. There is more, there is more, there is more, there is more, there is more. Are you hungry? Are you thirsty? Are they have been feasting, feasting, they have been feasting. But the scripture says on the last day, he cried out with a loud voice, calling men that are thirsty, calling men that have more rooms. Oh, do you have more rooms? There is a person, oh, for mercy. There is a person, Aleka Brada there is a portion of his goodness and his mercy that overflows if you are thirsty, if you are hungry. Can you make channels available? Can you make channels available? Can you make channels available in your spirit? Can you make channels available? Can you make ditches? Can you make ditches? For rivers will flow. The prophet said, You might not see the rain, you might not see the wind, but the ditches will be filled. Oh, with the water. Spirit channels, can you open channels? We want more, more of you. Oh, Jesus, we want more, we want more. Ba 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 ba, ayada bebe le ka ba 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 ba, 
Ayekamo, 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 Ayebaro de Mele Cabre de Andata, Ali Cobre de Bele Gababo, Ayakaborica, Ayakabo Borogo Belena, Ari de Moco Baria da Goboria, Areco Bede de Bagabo Gobriagada, Ayakaba Bacaboriaca, Abraquata Cabacabo, Areca Babacaba.
you don't have the second person. Oh, you might not be able to conclude this one. Elijah, I have to take the person. I have to be fed with the person, with the person. Oh my God. There is a person for the journey. There is a portion for the journey. Yes, 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 yes. The festival is come and done. But your way, as you go, there is a portion. Oh my God. For the journey, I am Kabala. Ah, Akali Adabona, Aremo Kobila, Areke Bela Kate, Arile Kabarakabo, Areka Takayada, Ayala Taika, Abreka Takadabao. There is a portion for the journey. There is yet a portion for the journey. There is yet a portion for the journey. Ayakala, akabra gede baba na gada baba baba. Akabra, 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 akabra. Ayatai keka, araka baba 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 baba. Abraka, 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 akabra. For the journey, I need a portion for the journey. I need a portion for the journey. Abracababa, 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 Abracabab
to pray for something I've been seeing since morning. I woke up this morning and I said I should just pray a little. As I was in the place of prayer praying, I saw an accident. I pressed more. It happened the second time. I kept pressing. Then I saw a bird on a tree. Then this hawk came swoop to pick the bird and it flew away. That is the spirit of death insisting that it must have a harvest. Can we decree that death will not have a harvest? From any of our brothers, our sisters, everyone that is part of this conference, death will not have a harvest. 
we deny death. It is written as for us also by the blood of our covenant. He has set us out of the pit wherein is no water. It is also written that the blood shall be upon us as a token that when death comes, it shall pass over. Can we speak? Can we resist death? Can we resist death? Can we resist death? Whether by accident or by any form, we resist death. We resist death. It shall not take anyone from our midst. Death shall not find a place in our midst to encroach. We build the heads of the Spirit of the Lord our God round about every one oh, of our families. We resist the spirit of death. We resist the spirit of death. We resist the spirit of death. We come against that spirit. We break your hold. We break your hold. You shall not alight in any family upon any destiny. We come against you. All oh, spirit of death, you have no portion in the midst of the remnant of his people. You have no portion in our midst. You have no portion. We resist you, death. We ask in the name of the Lord, stay your hand. We push back the hand of death, the threat of death. You shall not have a harvest in our midst. You shall not plunder. The scripture says uh, he comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. We insist and we deny you any kind of harvest. We deny you any kind of harvest in our midst. That we command you. Ale bragada baba baba. Be far away from our camp. We build the hedge. We build the hedge of the Spirit of the Lord. Round about every member of this ministry, every participant in the conference. That shall not have a harvest. Are kabrada baba baba baba. We forbid accident. We forbid accident. Are kabrada baba baba. Are kabele bronia. Rete kobilata. Aye pesomina. Are breke de meleba. Are breke de mena baba baba. We send you back. We send you back. We send you back in the name of Jesus. Aleke brada baba bala gaba. Leke de brada da baba baba. It is written, the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous. We command the rod of death to be broken. Araga braga da ba. E brada ba 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 ba. A brega de ba 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 ba. We come by the blood. We come by the blood. Ale kabrada da, a kabrega da balada, a brega da ba 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 ba. For the blood shall be for a token upon the houses where ye are. When I see the blood, I shall pass over you. That the plague shall not come to destroy. When I smite the land of Egypt, we command them to pass over. We command the rod, the rod of the wicked to be broken, the rod of death to be destroyed. We give you no place. We give you no place. Accident will give you no place. Death will give you no place. We resist you in the name of Jesus. Abra 
thank you Jesus somebody say thank you Jesus say Jesus I love you I love you Jesus Rain, Jesus, rain. Rain, Jesus, rain. King of Zion, Judas Lion, rain, Jesus, rain. Rain, Jesus, rain. Rain, Jesus, rain. King of Zion, Judas, Lion, rain, Jesus, rain. I say. I wanna run over. 
I want to run over. There will be field tonight. Kabela na salido. Amana fena samata balate. Obarata vilo kaberatosa. There will be field tonight. Can it be your prayer tonight? There I be field tonight. Until I'm filled. Until I'm filled tonight. Kabatela. Obarato ferata balamina. Anna, feel me low. Feel me low. Until I overflow.
come tonight that you feel lost tonight. Let it rain, let it rain tonight, let it rain tonight, let it rain tonight. Aman, aman, asabahani, gaba. Until I am drunk, until I am drunk, until I am drunk, until I am drunk, until I am drunk. Until I am drunk, 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 until I am gone, until I am gone, until I am gone, until I am gone, until I am until I am until I am Somebody pray in the Holy Ghost. Somebody pray in the Holy Ghost. Until I am here tonight. Until I am here tonight. Until I am here tonight.
Shaba, what I am done, 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 what I am done,
Amen, hallelujah. And so we give you praise, we give you glory for your kindness, your tender mercies, and your grace. And we ask tonight that you pour into the vessel of every man and every woman such grace as is needed to sustain a walk with you. We ask, O oh God, that you counsel with us through your word in simple, plain language as Jesus would have done if he were physically present teaching us today and be glorified forever in Jesus' mighty name. I confirm today that I'm not as young as I used to be. Hallelujah. When I woke up, it's as if I have been carrying firewood. And I had to compel myself to go around and do a few things. Then I discovered that I was sleeping again. And when I woke up from the sleep sec the second time, I was more tired than when I went to sleep the first. <laughs> you are welcome. Please be seated. Turn your Bible to the book of Matthew, chapter uh, sorry Romans chapter six. Went to the bank to fill a form. When I finished filling it, I found out everything was wrong. I put name somewhere else. Put 
Ah, uh, then I knew that I was tired. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. But I'm much better now. Turn your Bible to the book of Romans, <laughs> chapter number six. Romans, chapter number six. Um, for those of you that are based in Makadi, um, the moment we accomplish the crossover night, you'll be told when we're starting activities for the year, we're going to have a 40 days of 40 days of fasting and prayer. And in these 40 days, we'll be doing a series, I believe, except the Holy Spirit changes it, we'll be doing a series on spiritual warfare. So that a lot of people talk about spiritual warfare. Let's go down to the matter of spiritual warfare, how to engage, the things you need to know, and then uh, the ranking of devils that we deal with and how to deal with devils on different levels of rank. So we'll be in the cantonment, the spiritual warfare school for training. And for those of you um, that will be participating online, please stay tuned. We are having a series on spiritual warfare beginning from January. And in those days, we will be committed to the process. Uh, we will shut down traveling the barest minimum so that we can carry on with the series. I believe it will be a mighty blessing to the body of Christ. Now, the book of Romans chapter 6, anytime you stumble on the book of Romans chapter 6, this is a discourse. A discourse that uh, the Apostle Paul gives to the believers in Jesus Christ to equip them on the knowledge that they need to have in order for them to advance the course of their spiritual progress. So if you want to give Romans chapter 6 a title, it will be the path of spiritual progress. Hallelujah. Meanwhile, I want to really salute the choir. Uh, the, the, the level you went just now is very high level. The level, yeah. So Romans chapter 6 can be titled The Path of Spiritual Progress. So if you follow this path very, very well, there is no way you will avoid spiritual growth. So can we begin from verse number 1? The path of spiritual progress. He said, what shall I say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? If you are going to walk on the path of spiritual progress, you will need to answer the sin question. You will need to confront the sin issue. Because one of the things that is going to constitute a a major barricade to your work with God is your interaction with sin. So the first thing that Apostle Paul draws our attention to in keeping with the need to sustain spiritual progress is the issue of what? Sin. Now, you see, you will notice that when he asks the question, if we should continue in sin, expecting that the grace of God should abound. Now, I need to explain the question to you so that you will understand the basis upon which the question was asked in the first place. And there is nobody that comes to God that was not used to a kind of sin or the other. You see, and the level of experience you have in that type of sin that preoccupied you before you gave your life to Christ is what is going to determine uh, the trends of temptations that you are going to have. If the devil is aware that you used to be a fornicator, the temptations he will bring you away are along the lines of your experience in the practice of sin. 
And so when we come together as believers like this, in a huge congregation like this, the issue here is that people are dealing with different things. And there is a temptation for you to think that you are better than the next person just because you are not, you are not striving, you are not dealing with the issue that the person is dealing with. But God doesn't have different ways of dealing with sin. He has one sure way of dealing with sin. Are you with me? So, you see, Paul confronts us with the sin issue. And we are going to take some time to look at the meaning of the question in order for us to understand what he is asking, and then we'll now try to provide an answer to the question. If you are still with me, say amen. amen. Um, I want to take, you know, are you there? You know, there are times where we do straight preaching and all of that, but this is not one of such times. This is a time for discipleship, a time for training, so that each and every one of us can build capacity to work with God. Now, first of all, he said, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? First of all, he's suggesting to us that we are in a new regime of God's dealings, which is the regime of grace. There were two systems that were established in Scripture as systems by which God deals with man. The first system is what we have in the Old Testament is the system of the law. Hallelujah. So in the system of the law, God gave humanity a description of his value system. He said, thou shall not kill, thou shall not steal, thou shall not commit adultery. So God revealed his value system and he revealed his prescription of how he intends human life to be ordered. Are you there? The problem with the system of the law and why it was impossible to fulfill the demands of the law was that the people unto whom the law was written had no empowerment from God to live up to the standards of the law. The people unto whom the law was written were fallen humanity. Are you there? So when you bring the excellency of the expectation of God and you bring it on the face of fallen humanity, there is no capacity whatsoever in the fall that can empower people to live up to the expectation of God. So the, the, the problem with the Old Testament is that it revealed God's perspective, but it provided no empowerment for the people to be able to fulfill it. The difference between the Old Testament and the New Testament is that in the New Testament, God's expectation is even somewhat higher than that of the Old. But... Are you with me? But there is something called grace that is available in the system that is established in the New Testament. The old system is called the system of the law. And the new system is the system of grace. And it was Jesus that inaugurated this new regime that is called grace that Paul speaks about in New Testament theology. And the grace was one of the contents of Jesus. The Bible says that the law came by Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. The Bible reveals that Jesus was full of grace and truth. He operated by grace. He operated by truth. He was full of grace. He was a container of grace. And so when he went to the cross, to offer himself as a sacrifice for you, the implication of what happened is that grace that he is contained with was made available to you, establishing you in a new context. And Paul is attempting to acquaint us with this new context that supports our spiritual life. Are you still with me? And in this new context, Some possibilities abound. 
So with grace is number one, forgiveness. So forgiveness of sin is part of the things that grace makes available. Are you still with me? Are you with me? Empowerment, number two, empowerment to live righteously is what grace makes available. Making available to you the divine energy of God that is required for you to be able to prosecute God's counsel and to furnish God's expectation. Grace talks about a regime of the supply of divine ability that galvanizes us and gives us the potential to furnish the expectations of God. If you are still with me, say, Amen. Amen. Grace, oh my God. Grace gives you access into the currency by which God establishes his will. When God wants to do something in the earth, what he does is that he makes grace available. So grace is the currency that God makes available if he intends to establish his will upon the face of the earth. So it is grace that we receive, and in the grace that we have received, what we call salvation was made available by grace. And it is our faith that appropriated the, um, what grace made available, and that's why we are saved today. The Bible says that by grace are ye saved. It means salvation was traveling in form of grace. Are you there? And when you exercised your faith in Jesus and that which he accomplished, the grace to save became your possession. Are you with me? Now, you see, the Christian life is the story of grace. And it will interest you to know that there are different types of grace. And that's what the Bible calls it the manifold grace of God. So there is saving grace. There is a grace that brings salvation. That's what we call saving grace. Huh? There is another level of grace, which is grace to live the Christian life, irrespective of the devil advancing temptation, irrespective of circumstances that are stirred up in opposition against you. Grace is made available for you to live the Christian life, to fulfill the will of God in spite of the presence of the devil, in spite of the presence of situations that are stirred up in your circumstances to bedevil your advancement. Grace is the basis of the tale of the Christian life. And even in ministry, there is grace for ministry. Anything God is expecting you to accomplish, the reason why the expectation does not change and God does not compromise the expectation is because he has made grace available for the accomplishment of that task. Now, so, are you with me? It is also needful for me to explain to us that the personality that applies the grace of God on our hearts happens to be the Holy Ghost. The source of grace is Jesus Christ and his administration. But the, the agency through which grace is applied on our hearts, through which grace is received, is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the conduit pipe by, that contains everything that God is conveying to us. So the source of grace is Jesus and his administration. But the conduit through which grace is applied on your heart happens to be the Holy Ghost. Are you there? So if we attempt to define grace, because I've heard so many nasty definitions of grace, and someone calls grace unmerited favor. That's not biblical. I've, I've tried to check the scriptures to find out why do they call grace unmerited favor? And I've found no justification for that. Because the idea of grace is not favor. It's not 
Are you with me? The idea of grace is God participating with man to swallow up his infirmity and give him capacity to do his will. You cannot define grace outside of the presence of God being made available to you. God himself, not a thing, not a substance, but what? God. For instance, when you see great, uh, scriptures like Romans chapter 8, verse 26, when the Bible says, it is, huh? 26. He said, likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. That is grace. You will see God helping our weakness. That's the description of grace. God doing what? Helping our what? Even in salvation which is probably the basis upon which we, people say grace is unmerited favor. In salvation, you see, there was no way salvation could have been accomplished outside of the fact that God himself made himself available to pay the price of divine justice so that we can receive the dividend of the grace of God. So don't ever see grace outside of of God making a commitment to swallow up your insufficiency so that you can receive that which he is offering. So when you study your Bible and you see a scenario where God is helping your infirmities, uh, that is the illustration of grace. In order for you to have grace, it means you need to have God. Are you there? Need to have what? God. So if, hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Amen. I don't know whether you have been in my, my shoes before, but once upon a time, I was to preach to a people and it was a stadium full of people. So when I saw the number of people <laughs> that I was going to engage, in my enterprise of the gospel, I felt so insufficient. I felt I did not have what it takes to speak to 10,000 people, to speak to so many thousands of people. So what I did was that I went to look for grace. I felt insufficient already. And that's some years ago, the first time I preached in a stadium. I went to God to seek grace. They said, it's going to be a stadium full. I said, stadium? <laughs> so I went to labor in prayer to ask God for help, to ask God for help. What I was asking for was grace. Are you there? And in order for grace to be actualized, God will need to make a commitment to be the one available to do that which is required in order for his will to be furnished. In grace, God is the one at work, but in the law, you are expected to be the one at work. So we cannot define grace without talking about God. Anything you make of grace that is shut off, God being available to tackle your infirmities, to tackle your weaknesses, is, was an attempt to downgrade that salient aspect of the truth of the Bible, which is the economy of the grace of God. So in grace, God is available with man. And what he's doing with man is that he is swallowing up his infirmities, his insufficiencies, his weaknesses, his incapacities, so that he steps into the realm of an ability that he doesn't have by nature, which will equip him to do what is expected of him by the law. In grace, God, the one at work. Now, so, so grace is such a mighty resource that God, for the first time, makes available to us on the basis of our redemption. Are you there? I hope you know there is nothing you can do to achieve forgiveness of sin. So grace makes it available. Because there is a possibility of experiencing or receiving forgiveness of sin, 
there is also a possibility to abuse grace and say, all right, since forgiveness exists, then I can decide to sin willfully. Are you there? With an understanding that there is provision in grace that will make me right with God. Now, that kind of thinking is counterproductive to the plan that God has in view. And just in case that is your mission, you want to take advantage of grace so that you can dwell in sin because grace has the capacity to provide the possibility of forgiveness, then I need to show you a, a scripture quickly to clear your doubt. Are you, are you following now? In case someone decides that he wants to continue in sin uh, with the expectation that grace should abound, come with me quickly. Let me show you the, why Paul answered the question by saying, God forbid. The answer to the question is what? God forbid. Turn with me to the book of Hebrews chapter 10 and I will show you why the answer to the question is God forbid. Can you give me Hebrews 10 verse 26? Because someone here might ask me, um, uh, what if a believer now decides to camp around sin? Meanwhile, God made grace available. Are you there? Oh, you're not, you not with me. Okay, let's just answer the question. Then we'll go back to the book of Romans chapter 6 and continue the lecture on the path of spiritual progress. The average believer doesn't even know how to progress with God in his work with God. Because we no longer teach those issues. We no longer teach on those subjects. We teach about success, about, uh, <laughs> about breakthrough. <laughs> so the average Christian that is desirous of navigating with God doesn't even know how to accomplish that. In the book of jo uh, uh, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 26, uh, Apostle Paul comes to our rescue here. He said, if we sin willfully, I would like you to underline the word willfully. After that we have received the knowledge of the truth, this is a believer that has been enlightened and he knows that the nature of God does not accommodate sin. And now the nature of God has been imparted into your heart because of your salvation. You there? Oh my God. Oh my God. In salvation we become partakers of the divine nature because the Holy Spirit comes to tabernacle our hearts in order to bring everything about the nature of God into our ecosystem. But unfortunately for us, it is not only the nature of God you have. You also have the nature of fallen man. And what was responsible for fallen man is that... If humanity went into discussion with a serpent. And at the end of the day, the venom of that serpent that we received is what we call sin. And sin is the nature of the devil. You there? So we have three natures we are trying to battle with here. There is the divine nature, which is currently in your spirit man because you have received salvation. Then we have the human nature. Are you with me? I hope you know you still, it's the human nature that still makes you feel hungry. Did you, anybody felt hungry today? And that was driven by the human nature. Is anything wrong with hunger? So hunger is an appetite. Is that true? The moment it hits you, you, you are troubled until you find what to satisfy it. And all of those appetites are part of the human nature. To sleep, the desire to sleep. How many of you slept yesterday night? So the desire to sleep is an appetite that is associated with the human nature. Anything wrong with sleep? 
Now, so the desire for sex, too, is also an appetite of the human nature. If I ask you anything wrong with sex, no. Oh, you are not for, you are not. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to build. <laughs> Nothing is wrong with sex, but you see, every appetite is supposed to be exercised according to the prescriptions of the laws of God. Oh, you are not following me. So that's the human nature. The human nature comes with attendant appetites. But the laws of God give regulations as to how we apply these appetites. And if you apply these appetites outside of the laws of God, the situation that you will find is sin. There is another nature we have which came through the serpent. That is a serpentine nature, the nature of Satan, which is the, his nature of rebellion. We contracted that nature of rebellion the moment we decided to declare independence from God in the Garden of Eden. So man has satanic nature. That is sin. And you know what sin does? You are not with me. Sin takes advantages, advantage of your appetite. That's what sin does. It takes advantage of your appetites, hoping to use them to take you away from God. It means that the platform upon which sin runs are the appetites, legitimate appetites that are factored into the human nature. Have you ever been tired before? So tired and you just needed sleep. Has it happened to you before? And then maybe the Holy Spirit now whisper to you. When you are about diving on the bed, you say, can we talk? Are you there? If you go ahead to sleep after that you know that it is, the Holy Spirit is calling you for communion. If you go ahead to sleep, it means that day sleep was the reason why you disobeyed God. So as innocent as sleep is, are you there? It became the reason for which you outrightly disobeyed the intentions of God. So the nature of sin, which is Satan's nature, is a nature of rebellion. Are you there? That we got from the serpent because we subscribed to his Worldview. That nature of sin will attempt to take advantage of every appetite that is available. And we need to number all the appetites. They, there is, you desire to see. That's why a blind person is looking for miracles. Because he wants to what? Oh, you are not following me. You, are, you don't believe me. Do you realize that a lot of people are hooked on scenes that are tied to their seeing? Pornography. Is tied to, I want to see. Is it wrong to see? But a man can be brought into bondage because of seeing. There's a, a mighty pastor I used to know many years ago. So I, we were disconnected for like 10 years, and then 10 years later, I now met him again. And I sat under his ministration. And what I saw after 10 years, you know, the, the Bible says that the part of the jaws is as a shining light that shines more and more. If you lose connection with me for two years and you see me two years later, you will not be able to reconcile the difference because the glory would have been more. But I saw this guy after 10 years and he was diminished. He had shrank. And I was wondering what it was. Then he told me that he was hooked on pornography for 10 years. The anointing had gone. He was not into outright immorality. Are you there? He was just bound by what? I need to tell you what sin. You, don't, you, you, are, you are not with me. I need to tell you what sin so that you will be armed. If we don't solve the sin 
question, there is no way you are making any progress with God. Forget about those pastors that you are hearing about sleeping around. Their ministry ended like 15 years ago. Okay, don't worry. I will teach you how to hear God too. Go and ask God about them. Uh, heaven might say, who are you talking about? Yeah, they stopped doing ministry like 15 years ago, 16 years ago. <laughs> you can't have a walk with God if you don't deal with a sin matter. And Apostle Paul was so frank. He gave us the list of things to attend to in order for you to sustain a walk with the law. Now, the book of Romans is, a, is the most powerful book, I believe, in the entire Bible. First of all, Apostle Paul goes into the legal framework of things and shows us the legal premise behind our salvation so that you will understand that our salvation was not just emotional. It was ex ex established on concrete legal facts. So that's the first thing he does. Then the second thing he does is to bring us into the theology of the part of spiritual progress. And the first item in that array of divine truths is the item of sin. Is that clear? Hallelujah. Yeah. So, see, sin is a power. Are you with me? I say sin is what? A power. In elementary physics, what is power? The ability to what? To do work. That's, that's what power is. It means that sin gives you an ability to do. I told you about the psychology of sin, that sin is designed if you subscribe to it, if you align with it. It will give you an empowerment to do things that will take you away from God. That's the mission of sin. Sin wants to drive you away from God. So when you gave your life to Christ on the field, on the crusade ground, and you came, you were sober, Satan was laughing. Satan was laughing because he was almost so sure that he's going to get you out of church and get you back into your sin. And the reason why he was almost so sure is because sin is his creation. For the Bible says that iniquity was found in him from the beginning. Nobody tempted him. He manufactured iniquity. <laughs> you, are not, you are not following. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, just like in elementary physics, uh, power is the ability to do work. I'm telling you that sin is a power. And sin can empower you to do things that are contrary to the nature of God. Right? So that you will not be living according to the nature of God that you received through salvation, but you will live according to the power of sin. That's the vision of Satan. And you need to go put an asterisk a red, you know, when the urban development arm of government, they want to identify that a certain building is not in the master plan. You know, you know how they, what they do to it. They mark X, red. When you see a minister of the gospel playing down on sin, you know what you do? Because he has, yeah, you mark that minister X and don't listen to that minister again. That is how I got here. The way I, my path to getting here is that I, I listen to ministers, some of the greatest teachers of the Bible. I walked in their shoes. I drew from their teaching. Hallelujah. And when I notice that you downplay on the issue of sin and make it look, oh, well, yeah, I'm very radical. As you are saying, I'm very radical. When I make my conviction, I can be the only one that have, has that conviction, but I will stand on the rooftop and proclaim it. That's how I am. So I'm radical about my conviction. The first thing Paul says we need to attend to when it comes to the issue of the path of spiritual progress is the issue of sin. 
Are you there? So sin is a power. It gives you an ability to do things that are contrary to the nature of God. And it, once you hook up to it, it will look as if it is natural with you. Because it's a power, it's an ability. Just like grace too is a power. Grace gives you the ability to be able to do the things that God is instructing you to do. I hope you know, are you there? That doing ministry in my court is difficult. But those of you that are ministers in this city, you know. But when it looks as if it is easy for some people, what happened is not because they are better, it's because they found the grace to do the job. Because grace is what? An ability, just like sin is an ability. So, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 26. This is the question. For if we sin willfully, that means your will is involved. That means you discover that there is forgiveness, so you want to take advantage of the forgiveness that comes by grace so that you'll be dwelling in sin willfully. You see, if you decide to take this course, after you have received the knowledge of the truth, there remained no more sacrifice for sin. Next verse. But what you should wait for is a fearful looking for judgment and fiery indignation which shall come, which shall devour the adversaries. You see, God's attitude about sin is very strange. And your attitude about sin too should be strange. You should, you should have zero, zero tolerance for sin. If you open the door slightly and say, hey, you know, man is not wood, uh, if you have those philosophies that you maintain as buffers, it means you will end up in sin very soon. And that's why Paul says, we need to deal with the matter of sin if we are going to walk on the path of spiritual progress. And it will interest you to know that even though all sin produce darkness, are you there? As we go on in the study, you will find out that sins are in categories. And uh, are, you, are you still with me? Yes, uh, all sins produce darkness, but sins are in categories. S uh, any sin that has to do with immorality, produces a greater measure of darkness and can forestall your journey with God more easily. So on a day like this, we need to sit down, even though it's difficult to preach this kind of message, we need to sit down and answer the sin question. I believe that sufficient tools will be given us to know how to answer adequately uh, <laughs> in a moment of time. And the question is, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? So this scripture says that if we willfully decide to continue in sin when we have received the knowledge of the truth, or if we sin willfully after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remain, uh, remain at no more sacrifice for sins. But a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fiery indignation we shall devour the adversaries. Are you there? Next verse. He say, he that despises Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. So the situation of the law is that if you despise the law and you can, two, as much as two witnesses can come and provide the evidence that you have despised the law, in breaking the law, you will be stoned. You will die without mercy. But he said, this is the situation of the new covenant. He said, of how much sorrow are punishment. So in the New Testament, the punishment is higher than the Old Testament. The Old Testament was that you will die without mercy. And the New Testament is therefore saying that there's something that is more grievous than death. If English language means anything, if the Bible says of how much sorrow punishment, 
means this is, goes over and above the provision that was established, what, that was available in the Old Covenant. Suppose ye that he be taught worthy. And these are, the, these are the, you know, in court, if you want to present your case in court, we present your, your case in counts. Count number one. Count number two. Count number three. I remember the other day, somebody had a court case and they were asking me to pray. And when we looked at the case, it was, the, the counts were 520. <laughs> 520 count charges. Guess what? I was not involved in the prayer. How did you offend 520 times? May the Lord give you understanding. He say, so let's count the counts of the charge here. Number one, who has trodden underfoot the Son of God? That's first count. That means if you are sinning willfully after you have received the knowledge of the truth, you have trodden underfoot the Son of God. That's the first count charge. Second count charge, you have counted the blood of the covenant wherewith you were sanctified an unholy thing. That's the second count charge. Me, are you there with me? Third count charge, and has done despite unto the spirit of grace. Why is the Holy Ghost called the spirit of grace here? It means you are walking contrary to the desires of grace in deciding to sin willfully. Are you there? Meanwhile, he says that you be the judge. What kind of punishment do you think is this person is worthy of? Over and above the position of the Old Testament. So when you look at the way this um, justice system is, is structured, you will know that uh, God doesn't want you to have dealings with sin. So we we'll need to answer what? The sin question. Are you ready for us to answer it now? Yes. Hallelujah. You see, when you... Amen. Amen. Let me tell you something. You know, when I'm in Makodi, I'm friendly. But you see, when we travel out on missions, we're only friendly to our host. The reason why we live strange lives like that is because we are not going there to test. We are on our guard. We are ambassadors of Jesus Christ. And we know Satan is waiting for us there. And we have made up our mind on the sin question. Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Like Paul, I have already said, God forbid. But some of you have not said that deliberately. God forbid. You have not said it. So one, in order for us to continue this lecture, if there's any need for us to continue, then all of us, we have to say like Paul, God forbid. That's the only way we can continue. So I need to also tell us quickly that Satan will show up with temptation. Maybe I will tell you my own story first so that you will know that I'm not living in a vacuum. That as much as we make our plans to serve God, Satan also has plans. How many times has it happened to me? I think uh, there are two bold times, two bold times where women came to me and offered themselves to me. I think they have like two bold times. These women I'm talking about, if I had yielded, they would be giving me money. Are you following? So if you don't answer the same question, Satan will meet you with a proposal. Most of you here are afraid of me that I'm an anointed man. The people that Satan sends, they are not afraid of me. Oh. Yes. Some of these people that I'm talking about that made that proposal, they are in high place, places in society, in this our society. 
the top. And all the lady could imagine when she saw me preaching the gospel with a microphone was how me and her can be naked in the room. Now, see, if you don't answer the question, you'll be in a situation where you will lack utterance to defend your spiritual life because you did not answer, God forbid. It, Satan will arrange a situation where there will be no utterance. God forbid, Jesus. And some people are becoming bolder now. Did I tell you my story that there was a lady on campus, everybody she slept with, the anointing never came on them again. He left them bad-headed in the spirit. And the lady pursued me for five years. Even though I graduated, went for youth service, got a job in Abuja, she came to my office. Who, how she located my office in Abuja till today? And those were not the days of GSM. It was not by a phone call, a text message. It was, you know, WhatsApp has a locator now, WhatsApp locator. It was not WhatsApp locator. There was a, another navigation system that she had access to, and she was before my office in Abuja. You will not know. The lady I'm talking about is one of the most beautiful ladies on that campus. It is on her, on, uh, uh, based on her ministry that a lot of the pulpit have been depleted. The number of people on the pulpit, she has depleted the number of laborers in Jesus' vineyard. And she traced me in Makodi when I left. Got a job in Abuja, traced there. I was posted back to Makodi here and the same IBB square where we held that crusade. Uma Akpai came for a crusade and I went for the crusade. In that mammoth crowd, the lady traced me out. <laughs> I Sakomi Kakula. So if you have not said, God forbid, you will be, the day will come where you will lack utterance. You will be weak. After five years that she made attempts and the attempts were futile, she now preached to me, the gospel to me. And she told me that now that you have refused to leave Jesus, don't leave him again. That was the last charge she gave me in this city. And then left me. And since that day, I saw her once in a wedding. And the moment I located her in that wedding, I, my, own, my job in that wedding had finished. May the Lord give you understanding. Yeah. What, wedding, what wedding is that that you are going? Where this girl is? <laughs> it's a burial you are going for. That is, every song that they are singing there is burial song. During my youth service, I came back to this city so that we could process... I don't, there was something for which I came back briefly, and then I attended Sunday service. I saw her in the choir of that church, I, and and the pastor was so excited. I I, I pitied the pastor. I said, oh. Oh, 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 I confronted her after service. What are you doing here? You know what she told me? He said she knows there's no God. She just likes the fun. And you know what? She took that pastor out of ministry. I knew, I knew it. With her escapades on campus, you, you, mm, there are some magazines that have not been written no, about anointed men that are no longer on the radar, even heaven. You know, when they are using medical physics to test your, your heartbeat and it's going like this, the graph is going like this. You know, when the person dies, is there are many people that the graph used to go up and then heaven check one time, who is that lady? Yeah. May the Lord give you understanding. In the midst of the crusade, she located me there. God forbid. It's not something you will say once, or you will say it all your life. Your your 
your position against sin must be constant all through the journey. I wouldn't have reached here. I wouldn't be preaching to you today if I had just one encounter with that lady. I have seen her victims. For many years after the contact, they are not stable till today. I've seen her victims. And when I was leaving campus, I called Gabi Todo. He's my first spiritual son in the whole world, this, this guy. That was like 22 years ago, 2001. Now, so he's still following me. It means, I, it, it means I'm not a bad man. My first. When I was leaving school, I called him. I said, young man, there's something, there's something here. <laughs> you must survive that thing. So I gave him insight so that he will know the terrain very well. There are many pastors that are supposed to be sitting here today that are her victims. She traced me to Abuja. You know how big Abuja is? She located the office. We finished from Abuja. It didn't work. The Abuja owned didn't work. We, they posted me back here. I look, she located it. I went for a wedding. I saw her. Oh! The wedding, the wedding ended. Went to that church service, saw her in the choir. I pitied the pastor. And indeed, she, she had taken the pastor out of ministry. I'm telling you this life in this city. And since that day, I've not seen her till today. God forbid. So can we go back to the book of, so that's the answer there in the book of Romans chapter 6 verse 2. And the answer every day, the answer tomorrow, the answer before Jesus comes back is what? God forbid. He said, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? There are two words he introduces. Two words he introduces. We cannot finish the lecture this evening. He said, it's, it's huge. The first word he introduces in this unique way within this revelatory context is dead to sin. First phrase, sorry. Is what? Dead to sin. And then you see on the other side of the comma, leave for sin. So there are two things there. Dead to sin. Leave for sin. The word dead as used in this scripture, is the same word for paralyze. Have you met someone that's paralyzed before? Yes, sir. Like the lady that came in with the wheelchair the other day, I asked her, what is it? Why are you what? on the wheelchair? She said she had a spinal cord injury. I said, okay. I touched her leg and I said, can you feel this touch? She said, no. I touched the ankle. She couldn't feel it. I raised it here, she couldn't feel it. I touched here, she couldn't feel it. Hey, where does your feeling start? They say, from the waist, up. So everything down is dead. So it's dead to my touch. Do you understand that? The touch is real, but she's dead to it. She cannot feel it. Do you understand what I'm talking about? When you arrive at God forbid, then... God releases grace upon you such that sin can be present, but you are dead to it. You are paralyzed to it. Because sin is going to be wandering all through, navigating around your life forever until you breathe your last. But the accurate position that a Christian should sustain about sin is that he should be Dead to it. The sin is there, but he didn't, he didn't even notice. Are you with me? 
it means that God has achieved paralysis to sin. There is a paralysis God has, has released into you such that you are dead to sin. Sin was present, but you did not have the instruments to perceive his presence. You get that? Good. And then, to be alive to sin means sin is present and you could sense that it is present. Oh, you're not, you're not following me. Are you following me? That's why I'm saying that the moment you start becoming sensitive to the opposite sex that is not your wife, it means you are alive to it. You have the senses to perceive it. It means you are in a state, in a state of ailment. It's, it's a revelation of a state of, of ailment. You are sick because you are sensitive to sin. And you need to admit yourself quickly into the intensive care unit of the grace of God so that God can begin to administer grace to you and purge that sensitivity out so that you can remain dead to sin. How do you think we survived all these years? Dead to sin. And the moment we notice that we are becoming sensitive, we notice your height. Well, you are noticing the lady's height that she's six feet three. Huh. That's a lot of our observation. You are becoming alive. You are developing sensitivity to something that is outside of the allowance of God. That is suggestive of the fact that you have an ailment. And with that ailment, there's, it means that Satan has found your remote control. You know, an LG remote cannot manipulate a Samsung television. But the moment you get a Samsung remote, you can change the channel. The moment you become sensitive to sin, it means Satan can change your channel. You can turn from being a preacher to becoming a womanizer all in one day by a remote. Big boop. Big, big, boop, boop, boop. Big, 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 boop. So the moment you notice that you are becoming sensitive to sin, the thing you will do is that you are in a state of emergency and you need to expose yourself to the radiation fire of the grace of God. Are you, are you with me? Yes. Have you read in your Bible when, when the Bible says, salute one another with the holy kiss? The word kiss there is embrace. That means in the early church, they embrace. But you know what? When you, when that sensitivity to, to a certain sister, <laughs> it has developed. When you are doing your embracing, avoid that sister. <laughs> if you lose your virtue of sincerity, Satan will conquer you. I want to go back to heaven with a clean robe. Yes. And say I labored in the field of Makodi where they say the siren of the river dwells and my garment was without stay. The moment you become sensitive to a particular sin, it is suggestive of the fact that you need intensive care. That's when you take a fast, even if the church is not fasting. And you go to Jehovah Mekadishkem. That is the Jehovah you find in the book of Malachi chapter 3. He deals in fire, purging fire. And when you come to Mekadishkem, he will release fire on that lust and he will purge it out. And then when you come back and look upon that sister again, you are dead to the attraction. So we know when to withdraw and go for the radiating power of the fire of the refiner. 
We need to take our time and go through this, this scripture. Then you understand the psychology of sin. I will show you what sin does, how sin tricks people, the platform sin uses, how it communicates to you and makes you accept the doctrine of self-satisfaction. If you don't have a position about sin, because once upon a time in the body of Christ, so many teachers rose up trying to justify sin. Indeed, now, such things are still going on. Whenever you find that situation, it means Satan has empowered people to speak for him. And they can use pulpits and microphones, but he doesn't, they stopped speaking for God many years ago. And when you begin to see a man justifying sin and trying to make it light, it is a proof that his life himself, his life has gone haywire. And if you trace him, you will find exhibits of fingerprints of strange women on his stomach. I will take my, my, my garment without spot back to my master that was so merciful to my sinful soul that he sent his son to die for me. I will reciprocate that love by living for him. Such life that will be pleasing unto his great name. This is the story of the Christian life. And I'm trusting God that, sorry, I came late because I was tired. Do you pray for me at all? I needed prayers today. You know, you people like receiving prayers from me. Today was one of those days where I needed prayer. I woke up, it was as if I, I was lifting wood, firewood. That's why I came there. Are you dead to it? If you are still sensitive to it, it means that you have an infirmity that Satan is going to exploit. And what Satan will do is that he will pour out the ability because sin is the power, it's a power. And power is the ability to do work. He will pour out the power. And then when they are doing salute one or another with the, with the um, holy kiss, that's why they put holy there. Supposed to be. Are you? Then you'll be looking for that sister. You say, Kai, she's in the choir, it's foul. I will move my kiss there. My kiss will be moved there. I can see my hand. You are already doing that, that wisdom with which you are gravitating in that direction. It was given to you from by sin. So sin has a psychology it works with. It operates within the framework of a certain psychology. And I like to expose it so that you will see the psychology of sin. Nobody just sins. No. Sin takes you through a gestation period. There is a, an allowance time where you can turn back, you can change your ways, you can stop the process, you can abort mission. If you stayed until sin produced its harvest, it means you are not guiltless. If that harvest has been taken, has taken place, are you there? And you still come bold to church, instead of you to lie down, don't even listen to the preacher, just lie down. Just lie down there and ask him for mercy. But people lose the virtue of sincerity. And they start becoming hardened to sin. Hardened. That is sin bringing you into its next phase of activity, which is deceit. Sin has capacity to deceive. Sin promises moments of pleasure, enjoyment. Such enjoyment that he really doesn't have the ability to give. Because the true enjoyment is when you find liberty within the framework of your human heart. And there's witness in your human spirit that God is pleased with you. That is freedom. You don't know how it feels. Without money in your pocket and you know that God is pleased with you. He witnesses to your spirit and says, my son, I'm proud of you. Jesus. That's where every living soul wants to be. In that place where God furnishes witness 
and say, I am proud of your life. Sin promises a pleasure. A pleasure that is a mirage. You are looking at the lady now and saying that I'm going to gain by sleeping with her. And the moment you achieve that, you feel dry. You know that there was no reality in the adventure. So he, 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 see, there's deception in sin. He holds your heart and your mind in deception. And that's why Paul says, if we're going to progress with God, we need to answer the sin question. Satan's grand plan is rooted in deception. And so the Bible says that if our gospel be hid, it is hidden unto them that are lost, of whom the God of this world has blinded their hearts and their mind. There is a way Satan can blind your mind and your channel changes because you are sensitive to what you should be dead to. Can we pray in a moment? I, I pray tomorrow that um, I will not be as tired as I was today. My legs need my surgeon. I did like this. Jesus. I'm not young again. I was a full of. Hallelujah. <laughs> so we will continue this lecture tomorrow, but I want you to, to register your, your impression about sin before God. I did that many years ago and I do it every day. When I, when, when, Oh, when I rise up in the morning, I say, Lord, so many people are looking to me for leadership across the world. And it is written that an elder must be flawless in character. I don't want to be a disgrace to your name. I don't want to break the hearts of your people. I want to be standing on the foundation of your grace on a daily basis. Can you send me help? That's my prayer. Because I understand the song of grace is that it is not by power, it is not by might, but it's by the Spirit of the living God. That's the song of grace. It is not by power. It is not by might. It is by the grace of God. Can you register, register your impression about grace and tell God, God for me. God forbid. God forbid. God forbid that I will be deceived. God forbid that my life will be a wrong example. God forbid. God forbid. God forbid. Swabe sike bremine koskabalo mo koria. Yedi bo sinte le kere bo bo santoria. God forbid. God forbid. God forbid. Selemon Belama. I love I la bole la la bela. Oh, si abre skito bela minde, yamu kaseliato, broski sana handelia, baliso sela, yeni nam brosketo kombe la mi. God forbid. God forbid. God forbid. Hey. Yale, mama, mama. 
Jesus. Oh Jesus. Oh Jesus. Your grace is shines on me. Shines on me. Shines on me. Is your grace. Jesus' name. Now, if by tomorrow we reach the impartation stage, then I will release the Holy Ghost. But these are serious issues that we need to put. When you find believers live in victory because they have taken a stand by vital issues that Paul raised in the cross. The book of James, chapter 1. Chapter 1, verse 13, on the board, so that everyone off the board. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. God cannot be tempted. He had tempted he any man. What is the psychology of temptation? Next verse. But every man is tempted. When he's drawn away of 
his own lost and is enticed. Now, hey, come with me. Every man is tempted. What is the idea of lust? What is the mission of lust? Is to draw you away. Don't ever forget that the goal of sin is to draw you away from the path of spiritual progress. And that is the goal of temptation is to draw you away. And then, second thing about that scripture is that lost in this scripture is idiosyncratic. Lost, lost in this scripture is particular to you. It's something that is custom made by the devil for you. So the devil doesn't know which of his products you like. So what he does is that he begins to bring the products before your face. So if, if he's, he, the arrow he shoots, the arrow of lust, if it really hits your heart and it is imprinted on your heart, he doesn't know. The way he will verify that is by bringing product. Then if he finds a product that seems to synchronize with your heart, he uses that product to entice you makes an advertisement of you. And then as you begin to advance, it draws you away. You get that? So he, wants, he uses it to draw you away. And the Bible is saying that God has no hand in this arrangement. It is your lust that is responsible. Should I say something quickly? If you lose your virtue of sincerity, there's no man that has a loss that does not know. You will need to lose your virtue of sincerity in order for you to be carried away by loss. If there is no loss there, it means that the product he's advertising means nothing. You are dead to it. What animates it? What makes you sensitive to it is that there is a lost. Your loss. Not heaven's loss, not our loss. It is what? Your loss. It means the dart of the enemy has struck at your heart. Are you there? All right. Then when he notices that you have been lost for it, he uses that item for which you lost to entice you, to attract you. Then he begins to draw you away. You are willing to violate the laws of God just to catch up with your enticement. You are willing to go beyond the limits of scripture just to catch up with your enticement. That loss becomes your law. It becomes what governs you. No longer the word of God, no longer the spirit of God. And it can be a very mighty moment, intense moment. Loss is very intense. But the promptings of the Holy Spirit are quiet. You even have the allowance to decide to agree to follow God or not. Because he, his promptings within you are quiet. God doesn't compel you to follow him. But lust is compelling, is agitating, is, is twisting, is, is torturing. And he wants to achieve one goal, which is to draw you away. Yeah? Then when lust is conceived, can you see the gestation period? It brings forth sin. And when sin is, when it is sin, when it is finished, bring it forth. So there is conception, there's gestation. Even when you have conceived sin, and when you have conceived sin, it means that sin has given you the ability to perform it. But you are just looking for the occasion, the opportunity to actualize. When a spirit of immorality comes upon you, it's not the same day you find an occasion to actualize. That sin would have given you the wisdom on how to talk to the sister. I heard a lot of... Are you... Are you... Are you, are you there? Someone under the influence of sin was talking to his sister. He said, you know, you know, 
we are spirit beings. We are not, we are not bodies. Right? Just like you are not your handset. You, you, are, you possess a handset, but you are not your handset. You are a spirit, but you possess a body. Right? Just like you possess your handset. So, we can use our body to do something. But we are really spirit. That wisdom that is in that teaching. <laughs> you know? That wisdom that is in sin that is producing that wisdom. First of all, who told you you are spirit? Who told you you are spirit? I've shown you over and over again so that nobody can use the Bible to bamboozle you. You are not a spirit. You will never be a spirit. Not on earth or in heaven. So you say, uh, um, you know, um, we are spirits. So it doesn't matter what we do with our body. For instance, when we finish this thing with our body, now we'll start praying in tongues, and then you will notice nothing happened to our spirit. So, and it is the same spirit that will go and convince the lady. That, that was how immorality started. They will finish the immorality and they will pray in tongues for one hour. Finish immorality, pray in tongues for one hour. Another gear of sin has entered, which is deception. So they are living in deception. And then when a preacher comes up and preaches against sin, the Holy Ghost will find out an avenue and strike them. Then they say, Kai. they'll go on Facebook and say, and insult that preacher. It is still the sin that is giving them that insight to go on Facebook and do that construct. Because sin wants to pro protect its territory. May you never become a victim of the psychology of sin in the name of Jesus Christ. A sinner is very wise. Because sin gives him updated, up-to-date, day-by-day reasons why he should remain in it. It's not just the act that is a psychology that backs it up, that keeps people... Are you there? A thief knows that it is wrong. Even if his spirit is not regenerated, he has a spirit. Have you not heard in your Bible that he put eternity in our hearts? There is a longing there. And he goes to steal. He doesn't like, he doesn't like his profession. But, so, but sin will need to come up with a reason why he has to continue. That is he not seeing that when he drives the vehicle, which he has money to buy because he stole on the street, does he not see the attraction? Does he not see that everybody is recognizing him as a, a man of our time? Sin is intelligent. Even the wisest of men in terms of literary knowledge are being, they have become his slaves. Can we pray to them? If Satan wants to do his work, he must blind your mind. The issue of sin is deeper than what we are willing to accept. But if Satan wants to do his work, he must blind your mind. He must sell a tale of deception to you that will keep you in captivity. Not of chains or bounds or fetters, but the captivity from your mind. Can we pray to them? That the truth of the word of God will be my wisdom. That the Lord shall make us sensitive in the spirit. Sensitive to his word. So that when Satan begins to speak. When Satan begins to speak to us. We will recognize his voice. And we will flee. I will not be your slave Satan. I will not be your captive. I will not be one of those ones held under your power. 
I will serve the Lord Jesus. I will serve Jesus. I will serve Jesus. In my youthful age and in my old days, my master will be Jesus. You will never be able to bring me to the wall and make me deny the Lord because of pleasure. Arise Rakata Eate manteli, eate makolaba, eate masukatala, raskiza, rakademinotelia, paramo santoria brahabata. In the name of Jesus. Finally, before we draw the curtain tonight, are you already sensitive? has been orchestrated by the devil for you away. When you notice it, the best of us, it happens to us. Okay? Best of us. There's no level. Get to a minute, the anointing. As long as you still wear this body that has appetite. The day you are relieved of this body, you are no longer a beast. As you can. The appetites that are tired are there. Hunger. The appetite. Feeling. Satan has a platform to create a reality that is different from the reality that is forged in your spirit man. And you can take that reality to be true, but it's a mirage. It doesn't exist. It has no foundation. The objective is to draw you away. Is there anything you are sensitive to? You, 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 you've started becoming sensitive to a lady quietly, and you are a pastor. You can't resist her. But you are still powerful. Bow before the master and ask him. Take it away. Many times there will be in your Christian life where you will need to abort things. Many times. And the moment you lose your virtue of sincerity, you become a prey. As a pastor, Satan can knock you can knock you into a situation where you are no longer sensitive to your wife, but you are sensitive to when you notice that. Don't even keep quiet. Locate pastors that are close to you that you trust and tell them, this is my situation. Ask for prayer. Yes. 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 And that's why there are people around your life. Your wife is one of them. Say, eh, come on. Someone, so, I'm under a spell. And that, that is the day where in other days your wife will kneel down, you release grace. That is the day when you will have to kneel down for her to release grace. If you lose your humility, you lose your sense of sincerity, you will walk in darkness. This system is designed to draw you 
a way. Don't forget it for her. The lady I, I was talking about, that lady five, for five years, you need to see how beautiful she is. And Satan knows the type you like, whether it's a short one that is very short, and then you look down. May you. <laughs> You know me, I will tell you the way, the way it is. Yes. Don't ever come to that point where you no longer look to the hills. Salvation in these matters are not in yourself. You are a bag of infirmity. You need to look to the hills. That which came from heaven. It's only that which came from heaven. Even the Holy Ghost that has power to to. He knows your type. The, the, the one that are, they are very black and tall. Ha! Don't try to contend with Satan with your intelligence. He will, he will knock you down. So then it is not of him that will it. Not of him that run it. But of him that show it mercy. Can we round up tonight by asking God, show me mercy. Show me mercy. Show me mercy. I don't want to be a reproach to the gospel. When I go so high on the platform of your mercy and grace, then I break your heart with an act an act of reproach and make shipwreck of the fate of many that will not be my portion show me mercy show me mercy show me mercy show me mercy as I travel from place to place preaching the gospel that I myself will not be a castaway. And it shines on me Your grace It shines on me It shines on me Shines on me is your grace. Show me mercy. Show me mercy. You have elevated me by your mercy, by your grace. I want to serve your will in faithfulness. So look upon me. Look upon my infirmities. Oh my God, and have mercy. For I have no strength of my own, oh God. I don't want to be a reproach to your name. Have his eye to come, have a lama, Jabakos keteli nombre, Korea parasika. Man sobre scofadula meta kelina kadia branta baboria isome na sile jamina konte babala mamokoria show me mercy in the name of Jesus Satan does not know which product will work not that intelligent. Doesn't know your thoughts. He needs to try out his products. And you heard my story how I came out of a meeting in London. Heading for my room. I, I think I was in room uh, four to five. Four to five. In Hilton, Bankside, Central London. And our people, anytime I come, they, they, they make me comfortable, you know. Get a Range Rover. 
black one. I mean, 2020, everything's computerized. It looks like mine, but when you enter inside, even the seat, the seat is different. The, the idea of the seat is different from what I have in mind. The seat has an alignment feature. May, may the Lord give you understanding. <laughs> I'll be coming with a black Range Rover. Hi. And that's a hotel that you find so many white people. Just few black people because most black people don't even come to Central London. It's the most, it's the most costly place in the entire United Kingdom. So, the next day is navy blue Range Rover. So a lady was watching. Who is this man? So I was, I was going up the lift. She ran and entered. But you know what? There was no sensitivity to the product. That's why I can tell you this story. She talk, spoke about her degrees. She has two master's degrees. Um, I've forgotten the area. First degree in this area. That. Doing a project right now. But she noticed that I'm, I'm tired and I'm stressed up and she has competence in the area of easing out stress. We were in the lift. Temptation will not wait for you to come. Temptation will, will enter you in the lift. Yes, you have ordered your life. The discipline is there for you to keep your own calm. You will not survive with it. Some, some challenges follow you into the lift. The Lord will help us in the name of Jesus Christ. So we'll continue the teaching tomorrow. Um, I believe by tomorrow I should have crawled out of the tiredness. I believe it's an accumulation of stress from so many trips and it takes me like 48 hours to come alive. So, tomorrow we'll be here again. I want to pour my heart on you. Then when we reach that point, then the Holy Spirit will rest on you. Yeah. You need an impartation for, for journeys in the wilderness. Let us pray. I pray for my brothers, my sisters, friends, from different nations present here, from, I pray for those participating online, from London, from Belgium, our brothers and sisters from the United States online, I pray for them. That you will give this message wings to fly all over the world so that the hearts of men will acknowledge the fact that you are a God that dwells in light and in you there is no darkness at all. And our call is into an inheritance that is enshrined in the light that you have called us to walk in the light. That sin is not part of your nature. That when we walk with you, we begin to understand your righteousness and the equipment of grace that you have made available for us to be victorious over and above the traps of sin, the traps of Satan, the traps of this age, the traps of the flesh. traps of this world. Strengthen us. To sustain a blazing witness like that of John the Baptist. For it was written concerning him that it was a burning and a shining light. Thank you, Father. 
Jesus' mighty name. So we'll see tomorrow by 4 o'clock. I should be on ground by 4.30 the most. By 4.30 the most, I'll be on ground. For those that came to the office hoping to be counseled, hoping to be seen, I just discovered I'm human today. It was a humbling realization. I wanted my legs to move, but they refused. In fact, someone brought me a massaging equipment for the leg. I haven't seen my trouble. I tried to use it. It didn't work. So I, there was no help. But the Lord is my help. Um, I think what I would do to accommodate desperate counseling needs is that maybe we'll just open a 30 minutes window. So if I can come here by um, 3.30, and then we'll use that 30 minutes window to see people in desperate conditions. All other offices will be open. Abike, where's Abike? You have to join me. And uh, Tony, Pastor Tony. So we will share the work, and if there are issues that they can't handle, I will still, but we need to um, be available. Yes, my wife will be there in one of the offices, so that we can, if there are issues that are beyond the ability to solve, I will still come in, all right? Well, we'll open that window up for 30 minutes, and then after the 30 minutes, I will use 30 minutes in my office to pray, and then I'll be in the hall by 4.30. Now, I want to use this op uh, opportunity to thank our partners for the strong support that came in on, on the call I made for support for the Festival of Glory. How many of you noticed we were not taking offering? The reason was because we had enough money. So we didn't need to trouble the people. No, there was no need. There was no need. What we were looking for, the, our partners gave us what we were looking for. So there was no need for another offering. No. It was, I think it was only Sunday we took offering. The, the other days, we were supposed to take offering here, but the other days we forgot. Because... We had enough money. So, partners, you are so blessed. You are so loved. God bless you in Jesus' mighty name. We saw supplies from different quarters in, in different currencies, and we had sufficiency to prosecute the crusade. The Lord will enlarge your borders, enlarge your coast. He will be great among you. In Jesus' mighty name. Now, you know, what we are looking for are not ways to get money. No. The moment we have what we need for a project, we are doing this because he is seeing us, the great one. He's seeing our sincerity. He's seeing what we are doing. Yes, he stands with us. God has been kind to us. Hallelujah. Amen. We're hoping to be able to accomplish a few projects during the course of next year. And um, I believe he will yet help us. So partners, you know, in my, where I'm from, if we want to greet, we'll do like this. So, amen. Uh, I don't know if, let me find out if I can do what I want to do. Are you blind? Go down, see. Hallelujah. So the partners have been wonderful. You know, you have been seeing me from different places, London, 
The partners are the ones paying for my trips. Yeah. I have made not just foreign trips, I have made 15 foreign trips this year. 15. They pay for my foreign trips and my local flights. But foreign trips I've made 15 and they put me on business class all through. Yeah. You know how much is it for business class from here to London and back? It's 5,000 US dollars. So they put me on business class all through in British Airways, Ethiopia Airways, every airways that we had to use, I was on business class. In business class seat, you can press it, it becomes a bed. That's why I'm not old. <laughs> so can you give them a mighty clap? <laughs> and do you, do you realize that when I travel with my wife, they put my wife also on business class? Yes. You know I can't mention their names? Yes, I can't mention their names. And they will not even like it. But God bless you. I appreciate you. Uh, the, 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 the rural preacher, they took me, the rural preacher, and they said, you need to go everywhere. So the Lord will take you places too in the name of Jesus. <laughs> now, this is one of our pastors. You, you may not know him. Come. We ordained him here, but he is in the military. All right? And recently, he was, wait, he was decorated Lieutenant Colonel. Yeah. <laughs> Please, uh, just, just greet us, greet us. A, a distinguished officer. And when I say that, um, how many of you know Nasmed? You know Nasmed? I hope you know that's the home of engineers in the military. When you go to the plaque, the names written there, his name is there. It means he was the best student in NDA in his set. Wait, let me. So he's a first class soldier. First class. Please greet, greet your brethren, greet your brethren. Hallelujah. He will never say this. He's a very humble man, but I need to... In fact, I have more to say, but I, I'm, I'm gauging whether he's comfortable with what I'm doing. Wait, wait, wait. There's still more. Now, in the military, all right, before you be enter into left-hand corner, from major to left-hand corner, you write senior division course. He was the overall best senior division. <laughs> Yeah, go on. <laughs> so I don't know where that is. No, go, go on. It's to the glory of God. You didn't ask Amen. for it. I'm the one doing it. I'm the um, one doing it. Yes. <laughs> so first and foremost, I want to thank the Lord for this uh, privilege to stand before the people of God. I've uh, dreamt so much about this day when I'll come to the embassy to come and see for myself. Every time on the service, I've always been following, following it online. And by the grace of God, I have the privilege to stand here live today. So I give God the praise. I give God the praise. And I also want to thank my father and the Lord, Apostle Arame Osai, for his spiritual oversight from time to time. For me, ever since the Lord brought me in contact with him, there is no step I took without letting him know. There is no step I took. And thank God for the covering. Thank God for the direction that is always coming from time to time. What happened in Jaji when uh, what our father was talking about, it came at a cost. And it was because he paid the price uh, in the secret place. It was, just, uh, it was not just something that happened in the ordinary. It came at a cost. And so thank you so much, sir, for providing the covering uh, from time to time. Uh, wait. Uh, yes. How many of you are from Airborne State? Start, rise on your feet. All right. Surprisingly, God, God is wise. He is the commandant of that 
the Bonny State military system. Maybe somewhere in January, we'll be sending a delegation, probably myself in inclusive, and we are going to formally anoint him in his office in Ebony State and declare the reign of Jesus. Once again, can we rise up and pray for him? He is, he is an ambassador of the kingdom of God, a worthy ambassador, a worthy, and I can tell you with boldness. Can we pray for him? He has a future, future. Can we bless him? Bless him. Bless his household, bless his wife, bless his children. Wisdom of God will be upon him. Grace of God will be upon him. You will not lack for wisdom. You will not lack for favor. Your health will be sound. We banish every symptom. You will walk in health. You will walk in grace. It will be evident that the Lord is with you. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name. So this is, is our brother. But God has released him to the military as the platform where he will carry out his ministry. He is a man of God. He has kept the ways of the Lord. And God will keep him. Yeah. In Jesus' name. So welcome back home after a long time. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Amen. Let's, let's be seated briefly. Hallelujah. How many of us would have been able to explain to yourself that you missed tonight's meeting? Hallelujah. This is not a meeting to have missed, and the Lord has been gracious to us. And uh, just like our father announced earlier, uh, we're going to be having the second part of this impartation service tomorrow here at the embassy. The time is 4 p.m. Please, ushers, let's make the offering basket go around. Praise the Lord. If you came from um, Uni Agri, could you please indicate by a raise of hand? All right. So as soon as we're done with the service, those of us that came from the University of Agriculture, just make your way to the middle row right in front of me here. Hallelujah. How many of us, you're here, you made a decision for the Lord during the course of the Festival of Glory Crusade? Perhaps uh, your details were taken or they weren't taken, but you made a decision for the Lord either to give your life to Christ or for rededication. Would you please indicate by a raise of hand? You responded to an altar call. Don't do like this like this. Hallelujah. So for those of us that um, responded to any of the altar calls, uh, would like you where you are seated, write your name and your phone number and hand it over to an usher close to you. We have um, activities, programs to help you transition and to become established in your work with God. And um, for most of us that responded to the altar calls, that wasn't your first time of responding to an altar call in a Christian gathering. But let's say you didn't follow up or you were in help to follow up to become established and then you're having to respond to altar call again and again and again. Here at the Remnant Christian Network Ministry, we have a standing and a robust follow-up and discipleship department that will help you to become established. Praise the Lord. Are you there? So this Friday, usually our meetings, um, the new convert classes are for Thursdays, but there is a meeting that will be coming up 
here Wednesday, Thursday, and that's going to eat into uh, our time in the evening. So on Friday, we are going to be having uh, the first installment of our meeting with you. I uh, would like you to don't stay away. Praise the Lord. Make yourself available as we walk together in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Um, uh, Amos, please, would you please, would you please display the e-banner for the 10 days? Now, here at the Remnant Christian Network Ministry, we are an apostolic community, and uh, our mandate is to ensure that every one of us, everybody that walks into this place, becomes equipped and empowered to begin to take on uh, their own destiny under God. So every month we have fastings that are run here, 10 days fast. The first 10 days of the month we are having um, fasting. So the one for the month of December, and that is going to be, we're going to be wrapping up the year with it, is going to be coming up from the 1st of December to 10th of December, and every other time when our doors are open for meetings here, we are going to be here praying and trusting the Lord for direction and guidance. So, uh, I believe Thursday is going to be first. So, this Thursday, we're going to be starting the fast. Begin to prepare your mind, prepare yourself to partake in this fast in Jesus' name. And this Sunday, we're going to be having the wedding of our pastor. Pastor Arome Idu and Sister Magdalene here at the Embassy Thursday. Please, we want to encourage you. There is enough rice, there's enough stew, and other things available for you. Come and celebrate with these wonderful people of God in Jesus' name. Is there anything I've left out? Okay, we did announce a couple of meetings that our father is supposed to have in different countries. Uh, if you are around Lagos for, I think, um, is it Lagos? Give me Lagos Ibana, please. Okay, Lagos is somewhere around um, 8 to 10. Is it 8 to 10 or 9 to 11 of December? And then Ghana is 16 to 18 of December. If you are around any of these axes or you are able to plan your your schedule to accommodate those meetings physically, that will be a wise thing to do. The Lord bless us greatly in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Would you please rise up as we bring this meeting to a close. If today is your first time here at the Remnant Christian Network Embassy, I'd like you to just move to this aisle as soon as we're done sharing the grace. Just move this way. The pastor is going to meet with you. If today is your first time, praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Tomorrow I'm going to be making a call. Those of us that you have become persuaded and convinced that Remnant Christian Network is your church, I'm going to be making a, that call tomorrow. Prayerfully consider it, and uh, the Lord help us greatly in Jesus' mighty name. For thine is the kingdom. 